Abigail Paulson. Hello. Good afternoon. Afternoon, that is the part of the day that we are in. All right. Good afternoon, all. I'm Abby Paulson, co-president for the Hardy Middle School PTO, DCPS parent of a Jackson Reed ninth grader and Hardy sixth grader. I've been part of DCPS since 2014. As yet another Hardy staff member tendered their resignation last week, and we see the staff absence board with multiple entries, and those absences are being covered by other teachers who have offered to give up their planning periods to step in for their colleagues in order to have class coverage. I fear the house of cards we are living in is precariously close to tumbling down. Are we going to revisit the 30% absences we saw for the last month of the year last year? This is of course, after the reduction in staffing at Hardy by three teachers due to the budget realignment, causing even more pressure being placed on our already overburdened educators. I feel this hearing could not be coming at a more important time. The mayor herself in her press conference yesterday spoke to the need to quote, attract great talent to DC. And yet the teachers have not had an active contract for over three years. How do we attract great talent? We cooperate with their organizational body in a meaningful and honest way that shows good faith in working toward an accepted solution. We offer and maintain the fundamental items that everyone is baseline looking for, the ability to have a roof over our heads, food on the table, and to take care of our family. These are not unreasonable requests. How can we not make this happen? When the cost of living increase does not even cover the increases in living costs, then we are being disrespectful and demeaning. The fundamental metric of whether an institution is doing their job or not is whether they can meet their obligations to pay their employees on time. When employees cannot count on receiving their pay for the work that has already been completed and are having to worry and fret over whether they're going to be able to pay their bills, alarms should be sounding and red flags should be popping. These are indicators of a larger issue. What are the issues with DCPS that the payroll cannot be processed correctly and in a timely manner? Asking people to be patient when there are real monetary consequences for not paying their bills on time shows a lack of professionalism. We are not working in good faith. We are not trying to come up with a solution. And in doing these things in an ongoing manner, we are creating a reputation as a place where professionals do not want to come because they cannot trust that their best interests are being looked out for. The foundation of trust is not being built. It is actively being eroded, thereby weakening the foundation underneath all of the structures we are trying to build. We are not attracting any kind of talent when we are treating our community members without the dignity and respect they deserve with a proper wage that is something they can count on on a monthly basis. It is one thing to attract great talent, and it is another thing entirely to keep the great talent we already have been investing in within DCPS. When teachers and administrators cannot afford to live in DC and are commuting up to two hours or more per day to come and teach our students, this begs the question of how well are we taking care of our resources? The mayor stated that she wants to focus on how we will become the city of educators. We are already a city of educators and the answers are plain and simple. The question is, what is the plan we are willing to commit to and implement right now to keep the educators we have and show them what we actually value their contribution to our students, our families, and our city? The way to do this is with a sense of urgency that demonstrates the recognition that our educators are in a crisis right now. And if we do not deploy actions immediately, it is only going to continue to worsen. Our data shows that the efficacy of our educators is more valuable now than ever. Let's imagine our city filled with professionals who can focus on doing their job in teaching and supporting our students rather than whether their lights are going to be turned off or they are going to receive a payment past due letter because they can't pay their bills. Our city is filled with educators already. Let's take care of them. The path ahead is simple. Pay our educators the wage that is commensurate with their education, license, and locale. Be competitive in compensation and benefits. There is only up from where we currently stand as the lowest of all the quote states on how our average teacher pay corresponds to the average income for our state. We are more than 10% below our average income. Instantiate the education committee so there is a dedicated body to oversee this important work. 
negotiate with the WTU in good faith with the outcome of a fair contract by the end of this school year. Give housing incentives to our educators on par with first responders. Work to give student loan forgiveness for our educators. Revisit the newly aligned budget model to make sure there are enough qualified teachers and staff in the building to meet the needs of our students and our educators. This includes sufficient administrative personnel to appropriately cover lunch and passing periods to maintain a safe learning environment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paulson. 